So good morning to everybody. I'm uh, Nicholas Bornois of Capital Inc, uh, organizer of today's event. Welcome to the second day of our forum. Uh, the first day we had a wonderful day, uh, full of uh, unique insight on critical industry topics. And we had with us uh, industry captains who shared their uh, viewpoint and insight. We're starting our second day and we look forward to another terrific day. So we're starting our second day with uh, a very critical topic, the contribution of uh, shipping to uh, society. Than, uh... And we are privileged to have with us uh, principals from major uh, organizations no, support, that have been actively contributing uh, to society mm -hmm. for a long mm -hmm. period of time. And of course they are shipping related. So without any more delay from me, I will uh, turn it over to uh, Mr. Chavliris, uh, who is going to be the moderator of this panel. And again, I would like to welcome you all and thank you for being with us uh, today. And Antonio Padimitriou, thank you also for uh, the sponsor of the event. George, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. Um, first, what I'd like to thank Nikos once more for for suggesting that I participate in his venue. We have a track record together over the years. And as I've mentioned uh, time and time again, for me, it's not just a privilege to be involved with such a panel um, on this conference. I always treat this as, a, as an educational element where I always leave conferences um, knowing something more than I knew when I started. So effectively, a lot of people take the view that uh, the people who moderate or give presentations at uh, conferences I don't go and dictate or tell people, you know, how life runs and what we should be doing. But I personally find it, it's maybe very much part of my learning curve. Um, I won't go through um, the, the procedure of who's on board because I think uh, Nicholas already mentioned it. We've got uh, Mr. Lascaridis, Mr. Vianidis, Mr. Kosakopoulos, Mr. Antonis Papadimitriou, Mr. Stratos Papadimitriou, and Mr. Yanis Xilas, who are all very well known to you. Um, they all have their input and uh, what and their, their, their highlight how they're going to highlight what uh, the shipping uh, what shipping market what the shipping uh, people do with the Greek society and how we contribute how we assist how we support and how we at least do something which is uh, a serious component on the progress for the next generations now on that note uh, I'd like to pass on the, the, the words from the mr. Panos Ascaridis who have had the pleasure of working together on many, many for many years, he used to be president of EXA, the European Committee Ship and Association, where I had the pleasure of being with him as a board member for many years, and um, so I'm more aware of his attitude, his personal convictions, and his amazingly inspiring way he always speaks to people. Panos, thank you very much. Your, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman. Thank you, uh, Nicholas. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I will repeat again that it's a great honor and privilege to be able to participate in this conference and, and be joined by so many friends and, and illustrious personalities of shipping. I will be very quick. I would like to give, first of all, a very quick um, overview of the situation as we know it. There, there have been in the past years, starting from 2012 and, and later, several studies on the footprint of the Greek shipping business on the economy of Greece and on the society of Greece. Um, the study of IOV was the first one in 2012, followed by a study by Boston Consultants in 2015, a study by Deloitte and Touche. And all these have concentrated, of course, on the imprint of the shipping business on the Greek economy. Uh, uh, one does not need to dwell too much on this. Uh, three very major contributions, contribution to creating wealth, the GDP creation, contribution to creating employment, our seamen and, and show personnel, and the contribution to the foreign exchange uh, in, uh, income. Uh, very little has been said in these studies about the footprint of, uh, of shipping on the Greek society at large. Uh, this is partly due to the very commendable uh, um, attitude of the big Greek foundations coming out of shipping families who don't want basically to advertise their work too much. But you see in the latest years, 
due to fortitious circumstances, some of this involvement has had to be showcased and has become more visible and more transparent. Take, for example, the virus situation over the last many months, and take also the situation with the Greek <coughs> uh, armed forces needs and other issues, which have made some of these contributions more uh, visible and more transparent. At that time, when the first studies were published, uh, it was estimated that the total contribution of the, of the large uh, Greek foundations to the Greek <coughs> economy, excuse me, was of the order of approximately 4 billion. Uh, my calculations are that today this amount has probably doubled and is nearing 10 billion. And we are all, of course, and the public is aware of so many of these um, interventions and these actions. Uh, we must distinguish between the effect and the actions of the large foundations coming out of shipping families, the very many individual contributions and help, and not only financial or, or philanthropic help, but also uh, scientific, educational, and uh, other kinds of interventions. And we must be very grateful to all our colleagues who in one way or the other contribute uh, to this footprint. Now, uh, we can also separate this uh, footprint in actions which are taken individually, either by persons or by foundations, and actions which are taken collectively. And uh, my friend Yanis Xilas will, will speak about this, namely about the efforts that have been made through collective actions in our, or through our, with the help of our Ship Owners Union. To round up very quickly, two words on, on what uh, I have been involved in, what our family, our family is doing. Uh, I have the pleasure to, to lead uh, the Ekaterini Laskaridis Foundation. This is a foundation which was started about 15 or 16 years ago, but it followed up on work that has been done probably for as many years as those before that. We are basically a cultural and educational foundation. We employ about 30 people, do our own work, and our work is basically uh, consisting of two major, uh, two major entities. One is our libraries. They are now the second biggest libraries in Greece by a big distance, um, getting close in volume, but I believe also in quality to the National Library and they have the very particular feature of not consisting of one unified corpus, but by, a, but by a collection of some 90 individually contributed separate libraries by important scholars. So that's the first, the first big thing we're doing. And the second big thing are our educational programs, which clearly this year have fallen far behind due to the well-known circumstances of the virus, but in a normal year, they would attract around 30,000 students uh, who attend some 150 different separate educational programs. And as is common with every other Greek endeavor, we do also a, a lots of bits and pieces, but always in the cultural area, like publications, like <clears throat> seminars, like congresses, and so on. Uh, it is in monetary terms, not perhaps the biggest contribution of all. There are very many others which are far more larger and important in terms of uh, impact. Um, but it's it's an effort, a cultural and educational effort, and we are very happy and proud about it. I don't want to say uh, too many more things, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, but I'll be happy to take some questions at the later stage. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for your for your sum up it was uh, very very inspiring very impressive and in fact you know we're all very aware of the um, of your your organization and i personally think it's perhaps one of the most um, it's very significant because you've taken on a very unique area in being libraries and uh, and which is a bit more unique than most organizations which go further afield and we'll, we'll discuss um, and take questions later maybe make a few comments but in the meantime i'd like to pass on the floor to mr leonidas of and uh, welcome him on board and listen to what uh, Leonidas has to say. Leonidas, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We'll start with a small video and then...
It was through the sea that we prospered, and the sea commands generosity. Eugene Eugenides had a vision to contribute to the education of young Greeks in the fields of science and technology. He laid this firmly in his will, and it would be his sister, Marianne Sim, who would transform this vision into reality. Thanks to her, the Eugenides Foundation became a pioneering charitable organization for the promotion of technical education and the propagation of science to young people in Greece. Marianne Simo's successor, Nikolos Vernikos Eugenides, led the foundation into the new century planning the construction of a state-of-the-art new digital planetarium. It fell again on his successors at the helm of the foundation to see the plans through, transforming digitally the traditional modus operandi. For more than 60 years, the Eugenides Foundation has been contributing continuously to major aspects of the technical, scientific and maritime education, giving back to the sea its dues through a variety of means amounting to hundreds of scholarships along the years for postgraduate studies in the fields of technical education and science, 45 million copies of educational books for technical, vocational and maritime education, donations of modern technological equipment to educational institutions across the country, organization and support of conferences and projects on science, technology and the maritime area, a modern library specialized in cutting-edge maritime and academic bibliography with a further specialization in technical education topics. The Digital Planetarium, a unique 21st century center for scientific research, education and entertainment. A science and technology center with 57 interactive exhibits plus workshops and experiments creating a most exciting journey across the natural sciences with cutting edge technology. The UTEC Lab, its most recent addition of a creative laboratory dedicated to modern information technology and novel applications. Applications. Faithful to the path set by its founder and first leaders, the Eugenides Foundation has offered itself as a strategic partner of the Greek government, holding to the promise to be there always, especially during Greece's hard times following a long tradition. As in 1953, when Eugene Eugenides donated 1 billion drachmas to support the victims of the devastating earthquakes in Cephalonia and Zakynthos. As in 1999, when under the presidency of Nikolos Vernikos Eugenides, the foundation donated 900 million drachmas for repairs to school buildings damaged by the Athens earthquake. As in 2014, when under the presidency of Leonidas Demetriadis Eugenides, the foundation donated donated 700,000 euros to fully repair and renovate the Merchant Marine Academy of the Ionian Islands, hit again by a major earthquake. In these difficult times of the global COVID-19 pandemic, the Eugenides Foundation has sided with the country's national effort, committing an amount of 1 million euros for immediate emergency action in health and education. And inspired by a vision that never gets old, we continue, and so we will. Solely based on the strength of our own resources, and the command of the founders, and of the sea, from where the vision was born. For the Greek education, for Greek society and its many needs, because it is our duty, a duty we have vowed not to fail. First of all, I would like to thank Nikos and Olga Bornozzi uh, and through them Capital Link for this kind of invitation to this uh, friendly and uh, very interesting uh, panel. Uh, as Minister Plakotakis underlined yesterday, apart from having our eyes on current technological and digital developments, we need to highlight and I would add to enhance uh, in an emphatic way, not only the positive role that shipping plays in society, but also to communicate properly uh, the, its beneficial effects. First, uh, self-evident as it may be, I would like to emphasize the cost uh, 
the importance of shipping for for ship of shipping for the welfare of the global economy because you know shipping and where where Greek shipping is on the helm. Uh, if I don't want to exaggerate, but I honestly believe that uh, it's not only the importance for the society in Greece, but it has a major role in the global society and in in, in contributes to for, for for all the world because uh, shipping, as we all know. Uh, contributes uh, uh, in a very environmental and cost-efficient way in shipping uh, of uh, and transportation of food and products uh, all, around, all over around the world. We contribute uh, to fight poverty. We are very close to the 17 sustainable goals of uh, set by International Maritime Organization. We are there in blue economy. And we shouldn't forget that shipping worldwide, according to studies in 2012, contributed to 2.5% of the global added value and more than 31 million jobs. And Greek shipping is on the helm in all these efforts, and not only for the betterment of Greece, but also of the world. So that was a small parameter I wanted to put. As far as Greece is concerned, Panos is a very exciting spokesman. I think he overlapped all I wanted to say and makes my <laughs> my one minute remaining uh, <laughs> difficult to say because I run the risk to repeat myself. I simply want to add to what uh, Panos has mentioned before that uh, shipping industry is industry uh, through investing in other sectors of the economy because a lot of short investments they they, they which support Greece in good and bad times, they emanate out of shipping. And through charitable foundations, supported in a holistic uh, way, Greek society, particularly in the times, present times of the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemia. Greek shipping, through UGS initiative, Synenosis, and I'm very excited to understand what friend John Xilas is going to say later on, which unites all the voices of Greek shipping, as we say in plain English, uh, together with foundations through private shipping originating gestures of generously illustrated, uh, of, generous, uh, of generosity, illustrated the spirit of solidarity to society. I'm convinced that the experience which you all gained through the pandemic uh, will set the path for more things to be done. It is proven that all together we can achieve a lot of things. And uh, I honestly believe that uh, uh, through these actions and the good paradigms set will uh, give uh, opportunities for more to follow. And uh, this message is going to be conveyed to the society because uh, we are low profile sector and what we do is not so um, advertise or publish that we don't want to do, but it's very important for us, the society, to feel we are there and we are there. And I'm very proud that uh, seeing around, I see uh, Panos, I see Anthony, I see Achilles, I see many people, good friends around the panel, and that just set the right example of paradigm. And of course, I emphatically end by saying Synenosis effort is very important because that represents the joint voice of all of us, a part of what we are doing individually. Thank you. Leonidas, thank you. Thanks for the great presentation. Um, very, very inspiring and very impressive, actually, because um, in, a, in a very simple way, I think we've all been involved in, we're, we're all acquainted with the, with the organization, especially the, the, the functions we've attended on numerous occasions and the guidelines and the fact that you've got a very wide way of thinking. I mean, you've got a lot of lateral thinking involved in that organization uh, and we've been very impressed and I think you've made a, a very serious, serious contribution to Greek shipping society. I'm sure there's many good years to come. On that note, I'd like to thank you very, very much. Um, the next speaker today is Mr. Achilles Konstantakopoulos, which is probably all very well known to you. Um, and I'll just leave the floor to him to see what he has to advise about his contribution. Thank you. Good morning to all the friends and distinguished panel. Um, and many thanks to Capital Link for today's kind invitation. It's a great honor to participate uh, in this uh, distinguished panel. 
I would like to clarify from the outset that we view sustainability, social responsibility, and respect as a core values, which are central to our business culture and serve us as clear guidelines across all our operations. Uh, the love of my father, Captain Vasilis, for our country and our homeland, Messinia, which became a commitment of our family, this area, uh, are the key drivers for everything we do in the foundation. This culture of giving uh, took a more structured form in 2011 by establishing Captain Vasilis and Carmen Kosadakopoulos Foundation. Our initial aim was to foster agriculture development uh, by giving farmers the tools and knowledge to practice sustainable farming and supporting their commercial endeavors. Since then, we have added more pillars to our foundation sustainable development strategy in other sectors, such as social cohesion, culture, and the environment. We have always placed great emphasis on the importance of synergies, so we try to work as much as possible with others in the belief that together we can achieve more. A good example is uh, the Navarino Environmental Observatory, which is established in 2009 in cooperation with uh, Stockholm University and the Academy of Athens. One of the reasons we did so, apart from the excellent research work of more than 150 scientists involved in the field of climate change, was to make environmental protection a top priority in the minds of the local community. of Again, on the environmental front, some of you may already know that my father became one of the first members of the Hellenic Marine Environment Protection Association, HELMEPA, back in 1982, and the main contributor of HELMEPA Junior, which we financially support which we financially support since its establishment in 1993. Since the establishment of Captain Vasilis and Carmen Sanapolis Foundation, the needs of our country have been great in the wake of the refugee crisis, financial crisis, forest fires, floods, and the recent uh, health crisis. We remain, we remain firmly committed to respond to such needs at the forefront of efforts nationwide. This response may range from social relief of distress caused by the economic crisis to support for the health system in the face of the COVID-19. And most of our actions at this level are through the Greek ship owner social welfare company, Synenosis. And I would like to take this opportunity as all my uh, the speakers before me to thank and congratulate them for their outstanding work. Uh, allow me to share a small video about our work today and I remain at your disposal for any questions. Oops. Sorry. Συνειδητοποίησαμε σιγά σιγά ότι πρέπει να κάνουμε ο καθένας ό,τι μπορεί σαν άνθρωπο, σαν πατέρα, σαν παππούς για να σώσουμε τον πλανήτη.
Thank you. And um, uh, of course, at your disposal for any questions at the end of the session. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Akira, thanks very much indeed. In fact, uh, this is another part of the learning curve. Um, I was very worried in the beginning when a couple of you mentioned you're going to put the videos on the on, on the screen. Uh, and I thought, oh my God, you know, with this kind of limited amount of time, we, we're accustomed, I think you see Panda smiling there, we're accustomed to the fact that when, when he's using a video, you usually have to go through the logistics of plugging in, powers and tuning or whatever. And I thought, oh my God, we're not going to make it. So on that particular note, I'd like to thank you sincerely, Akira, for that great presentation. Um, I'd also like to thank you, the guys who've spoken so far that you've kept impeccable timing. And just on a small, more humorous note, I'd like to mention that uh, we're not wearing masks, not because we're being irresponsible, but we're actually alone in our room. So therefore, we're just uh, making sure that we does not have to use this ghastly gadget, which we have to use all the time. So right now, it's not really needed. So we're still safe. Um, on that note, I'd like to thank you very much, Akira. And pass on to the next uh, speaker, is Mr. Andonis Papadimitriou, who represents the Onassis Foundation. As you're all aware, the Onassis Foundation is a very well-known institution, basically founded by a very inspiring, a very volatile character by the name of uh, Aristotle Onassis, who, who's more, perhaps one of the most enigmatic, colorful, and um, amusing, and really uh, impressive person we've known in the past. I happen to have the the luxury or, or the, I'd say, the, the, the privilege of meeting when I was very, very young. And I, one thing which impressed me with him is how imposing he was in his aura. And I want to mention this point as well, that sometimes in life, it's not just what you do, it's the, it's the chemistry and the idiosyncrasy of the character which sometimes brings the personalities uh, tremendous uh, abilities to achieve things by inspiring those around us. And that note, I won't mention anything further. I'd, leave, I'd like to pass on the floor to and then public with you and uh, give us your brief presentation about the Onas Foundation. Thank you, Andon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, George. Uh, very kind of you. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Nikos and Olga Bornozis. And uh, of course, uh, mention that uh, with all my fellow panelists, we meet uh, regularly, I think, in various uh, places, in various uh, initiatives uh, for. Uh, the bicentenary for uh, synenosis for other places. So, uh, and it's always a pleasure to be with you, uh, uh, gentlemen and ladies. It's a great, uh, it's a great honor to participate in this uh, uh, congregation. Uh, and I'm having this uh, <clears throat> introduction because I'm not going to talk to George about the UNAS Foundation. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, address a few words, not to my fellow panelists, because we, we know that the things I'm going to say, we all know, we have discussed these issues between ourselves and uh, in various places. So I would like to address basically the audience at large, as well as the next generation of uh, people who will come after us. Uh, leading all these uh, famous uh, ship owning uh, companies and uh, benefactory and uh, foundations and so on. So in the age of ESG, it is very important to address the issue of what is the social uh, attitude, the social picture that shipping is producing. Others have already mentioned and will mention the impact of shipping uh, to society at large and to the economy in particular, and to the Greek economy even more particularly. <clears throat> and it is true that shipping has been alleged to have uh, contributed to uh, a lot of bad things uh, for the environment, uh, uh, burning high sulfur fuel oil, and doing having other uh, practices which are considered or alleged to be uh, improper or even unconscionable. However, as uh, it has been already mentioned, Greek shipping has been at the forefront of protecting the environment. Helmepa has already been discussed, and I would like to say that Greek shipping has been at the forefront of renewing the fleet. The Greek ship owners control one of the youngest fleets in the world, and the youngest, a young fleet means basically a fleet that is more efficient and therefore less polluting for the environment. Uh, Greek ship owners have replaced the famous generation of uh, benefactors from Epirus, from uh, uh, Egypt, from 
from Russia, like Singros, Sotosice, Salvero, Benax, etc. Uh, and uh, it is now uh, our responsibility to carry the torch. But why are we doing all these things? What is the purpose? What is the reason of, of this uh, uh, attitude we are taking? Uh, is it because we want to atone for the sin of owning a lot of wealth? Or is it possibly because we want to beg forgiveness for wrecking the environment, explo exploiting the workers, and not paying taxes? I have personally heard these words uh, on occasion, and I'm sure many of you, <coughs> my fellow panelists, uh, know this attitude. Uh, it is practically impossible, in fact, to convince some people that these accusations are false. In this case, as many others, perception becomes reality. Given this attitude, a lot of ship owners who wish to do something good often opt to work below the radar or to work through the church or through synenosis or through some other uh, well-established institution to mask them so that they don't appear to the public. But having taken the decision to do something and to give back to society and to assist our fellows, we are first with a further dilemma. It can be summarized in the words of somebody I can't remember at this moment. The dilemma is between curing a bad or creating a good, alleviating pain or creating happiness. Or schematically, would you prefer to sponsor a concert or paying the cost of curing a number of ill people who cannot afford it? Is it paying for food for a starving population in an undeveloped country or giving scholarships to young people in a developed country, building a hospital or building a cultural center? These questions are very hard to answer and they are even harder to answer to the people who make to the request. The decision unfortunately has to be made rationally and not emotionally. I mentioned ESG at the beginning. This is also a way of considering what we can do. The environment, social solidarity, taking responsibility for assisting society in the fields of health, culture, mm -hmm. education. <clears throat> the field of possible actions is infinite, but the funds needed to do all this is infinite, but more so. We must see ourselves as trustees of the wealth earmarked for this purpose. As trustees, we are bound to act responsibly, but also to exercise our discretion. Being informed by our own emotions, specificities, and preferences is fine, as long as we only do so after thinking about what we want to do and its impact. If it were an investment, would we do it? Does it create value for money? One last comment, Mr. Chairman, before I finish. There are a lot of people who can afford to give 1,000 or 10,000 euros. Fewer can give 100,000 and very few can give 1 million. My recommendation to those who ask me is, if you can give a substantial amount, use it wisely in one bigger project rather than cut it in smaller pieces. You will do more good and you will have more impact in that way. There will always be someone else to cover the smaller projects, but it is unlikely there will be anyone else to take on the more expensive one. Always measure the impact of what we do in terms of your own conscience. Sit back and take a moment to ask the question of impact. It is hard to define, but you will know it when you see it. Thank you very much. Andoni, um, thank you very, very much uh, for your presentation. In fact, on a personal basis, I think um, you rather surprised me in a very, very positive way because um, I would have thought an organization as large and as important as yours, we would have thought that the tone of, of what you had to say was uh, something that perhaps would have been even sounding a bit flamboyant. Um, I'm very happy just to make a, a my minor comment that the fact that uh, it is very, very important and unique what you mentioned about the, the, the issue of guilt, that basically the people who sometimes make a negative remark or some connotation about what's in it for me and whatever, and we've heard these expressions many, many times in the past, all of us. And I think if only people who are literally are, who are critical, 
who sometimes make obnoxious remarks, if they only knew the work, the sacrifices, the hardship, the family disruptions, mm. which we all have to go through, and all those who've created something important, they all have to go through in their life. You know, it's very shameful when effectively they look at a charity and people who've literally put a lot of sweat and tears in putting it together to help so many people to come out with that negativity of saying, well, they're doing it because of their, because of their guilt or because of their, their, their scatty background. It's very, very bad. And I think last but not least, um, I think all of us, one basic ingredient, which I think we all overcome with in Greece, is the fact that we do have faith in God. We're believers and uh, we maintain our personal convictions. And I'm very, very happy that you put that presentation the way you did. Very impressive. Thank you, Anony. The next um, speaker will be Mr. Sinon Impatne. Sato Papa Dimitriou, smile on his face. Good morning, Sato. Hope it is fine with you. Very impressive background, by the way. With the, with thank the, you. Thank you. Very, very well, nicely. And uh, let's see what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Capital Link and Nikos, for this uh, invitation. Uh, good morning to all, uh, dear panelists. It is indeed a, uh, a great honor and a, uh, a privilege to be here with you, such a, such a distinguished uh, group of panelists. Indeed, I represent the Maria Tsakos uh, Foundation, the International Center for Maritime uh, Research and Tradition. And I will be playing two short videos in the background, uh, hopefully, uh, that uh, basically relate to the uh, two cornerstone activities of the foundation. Uh, with respect to education, and that is the Maria's home at uh, Cardami Lajios uh, and uh, Tsakos Enhanced Educational Nautical School, teens in the capital of uh, the island. Strato, Strato, I'm sorry, we can't hear you well. If you can speak a bit louder, please. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, I thought I. Uh, okay. I, I'm saying that uh, I uh, that we'll be playing two videos. Uh, one that relates to the two cornerstone activities of our foundation. Uh, one is uh, Maria's home at Cardamila uh, Hills, and the second is an Tsakos Enhanced Educational Nautical School in the capital of the island, again of Hills. While the benefits of shipping to society uh, can be categorized in purely economic terms, and uh, it has been said before, in both uh, direct, indirect, and induced benefits, which have multiplying effects on the economy, especially of a country like Greece. I would also like to mention two other aspects, which are very important, but they are often discounted, often neglected, but remain intangible. The first aspect relates to the function of shipping in supporting as the fourth weapon our national defense, as we know very well, the role of merchant marine has played throughout history. From the War of Independence up to recent times and defending, supporting and promoting national interests, both in times of peace and in times of war. The second aspect is shipping's role in inspiring and being a source of national pride for our society, especially for the youth. It is not a small feat to be only 0.15% of the world's population and owning almost 20% of the world's merchant fleet. Such an accomplishment, which has been lasting for decades, functions as a role model for young generations. It gives the signal that yes, we can be successful. Yes, we can be competitive if we work hard, if we are dedicated to our aim. Paraphrasing Frank Sinatra, if we can make it in shipping, we can make it everywhere, for every individual, for Greece as a whole. We at Maria Tsakos Foundation consider that emphasis should be placed in guiding through education the youth towards a maritime career and embedding them the attributes of seamanship. We want to teach our young generation to be creative, to have a sense of entrepreneurship, to think globally 
and to act in a collaborative spirit in order to be successful. We place emphasis in the middle school years because these are the years that students shape their character and make their decisions as to the field of study they will choose. We subscribe to the saying, give a man a fish and you will feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and he will, and he will feed his family forever, for a lifetime. Thus, our efforts are concentrated in supporting young people by providing education in principle to underprivileged students who are boarding in Maria's home in Cardamila and who experienced firsthand the culture and ethos of shipping, which still prevails in Cardamila and Hios in general, like no other place in Greece. At the same time, our teens nautical high school, the first private nonprofit nautical high school in Greece with state of the art facilities and high level educational staff is already in its third year of operations with enrollment of over 100 students. These students will be the future of shipping. For us, for as long as they are Greek seafarers, Greek shipping will be able to play a protagonistic role in the shipping arena, but also it will be the breeding place for an emerging young generation of ship owners who will continue with the patriotic and philanthropic public benefit activities of these and previous generations. As our founder, Captain Tsakos has repeatedly said, if it wasn't for Stavros Livanos, who built the Livanos High School in Cardamila, for the generation of Captain Tsakos to study and learn, and which was, and which was the breeding ground for ship captains and eventual ship owners, they would not be currently owners of ships, but rather they would be the owners of goats and sheep. Thank you so much, Mr. President. This will be for another minute or so, if, uh, but uh, if we're running time, we can cut it short and uh, we can close this uh, video. It's okay, fine. Thank you, close it, George. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Santo, thank you very much. Uh, very impressive. The fact that you covered so many areas and so much activity in such a short period of time. Um, if I may say one thing I'd like to say that is particularly impressive, what you've done in your organization, is the fact that you focused on the younger generation. Because a lot of people assume and think that uh, people who want to have a career and go to sea, they start making, you know, going in that thinking mode when they're early 20s or when they're at school or university. To the contrary, it's very important that uh, people or children should be inspired at a very young age. I'd even go even, even younger when they're 9, 10, 12 years old, who can have the ability of being, of being conversant or familiar with the fact that the shipping is a maritime nation. And that age, it's, it's the only time when we're very younger that you can be inspired and actually have the bug of romanticism. Because in fact, shipping to all of us, as we know, it's, it is a romantic activity. And I think if you don't get it uh, at a young age, if you don't actually be inspired by shipping in a very, very young age, it's sometimes later, it's very, very difficult to make a decision which you haven't had that zest, that enthusiasm, that childish enthusiasm from a young, younger age. So I think that in our own, what uh, Captain Panayoti has done, God bless him, is, um, is, the, is the schooling of that generation, which I think is, besides all the other activities he's involved with, I think is very, very impressive. On that note, I'd like to thank you very much, Tato, and also for your timekeeping. Thank you, thank uh, you. And uh, I would like now to give the, give the floor to Mr. Yanis Xilas. And uh, Mr. John Xilas will be talking about the, um, the, uh, the contribution of the Greek Ship on a social welfare company, the Cianosis, and uh, the impact which they do as, as, a, as an organization and a group of people, which is basically the whole Greek Shipping Society and their contribution to, to the society in Greece. Yanni, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we're running a little bit short of time, I will go first straight to a two minute uh, video and then I can go ahead with my presentation. Μια θάλασσα μα ενώνει, ενώνει του Έλληνε με όλο τον κόσμο. Μια θάλασσα πλατιά. Όσο μακριά και αν φτάσουμε, Δεν υπάρχει άλλο δέσιμο σαν αυτό με την πατρίδα, με τους τόπους, με τους ανθρώπους. 
Δεν δένουν μόνο τα πλοία όταν μπαίνουν στο λιμάνι. Δένουν και οι άνθρωποι μεταξύ του. Η θάλασσα μα δένει σαν ένα. Μα κάνει δυνατού για να προσφέρουμε τη δύναμή μα σε όσου έχουν ανάγκη. Χάρη στο συλλογικό μα χαρακτήρα, η προσφορά μα στον άνθρωπο, την κοινωνία και την πατρίδα μα ξεπέρασε κάθε προηγούμενο και δημιούργησε ένα φάρο προσφορά και αλληλεγγύη. small glitch. Um, good morning from my side as well. Thank you, Nico, and uh, the forum organizers for including this session in the conference uh, program. I would also like to congratulate the gentlemen who have uh, previously presented their institution's activities uh, in this most important sector. We're all proud of their invaluable contribution to society. It is important to present not only the financial and strategic contributions of Greek shipping to the economy, as uh, Mr. Lascaridis very well presented earlier, but also uh, the humanitarian side of our industry and its strong uh, will to be an active and responsible stakeholder to the benefit of our society. Um, a few minutes ago, we watched a short video highlighting the mission of Synenosis, the Greek ship owner social welfare company. Um, Synenosis was established in 2016, uh, but that was a legal establishment because in essence it was working many years ago. Um, so it was established as a unique entity of this kind in our country and I don't know any other in the world, to be honest with you. Synenosis is a separate legal non-profit entity through which members of the Greek shipping community and uh, the maritime cluster at large can collectively offer assistance uh, to our state as well as its population. Um, this initiative does not intend to substitute, of course, the role of existing institutions established by renowned uh, personalities of our industry. We've seen some of, them, of those presented earlier. Um, and of course, it doesn't intend to substitute those that might be similarly established in the future. It will, however, strive in becoming the exclusive permanent vehicle and the solid reference point for the collective and well-organized social responsibility of the shipping community. Synenosis aims to address matters relating to the welfare of the society with immediacy and care and uh, it has developed since its inception a wide range of actions with focus on several important sectors as we saw earlier in the video uh, with a view to becoming an essential component in uh, preserving social cohesion while providing an effective platform 
uh, of support for thousands of fellow citizens in need. And the numerous positive messages received daily uh, is uh, confirmation of that. Synenosis follows naturally the tradition of Greek shipping priceless contribution to society that has been linked to every important period of our country's modern history. Uh, our forefathers went to the sea, endeavoring a better life and succeeded through hard work. They never expected any assistance from their homeland. To the contrary, the generous placement of part of their wealth earned at sea to their homeland became a life stance for the majority of Greek ship owners. As Greek uh, shipping transited from sail to steam, its contribution to the country's economy and the well-being of the Greek people became more and more evident. The shipping activity was instrumental in maintaining many islands' population, uh, decisively contributing to its overall infrastructure. This is demonstrated even today on islands as Chios, as we saw earlier, Inuses, Andros, and so on. If one was to explore places in Greece that gave birth to people of the sea, either in the islands or the mainland, he would certainly discover traces of social welfare acts attributed to members of our uh, shipping community. This is because all Greeks involved in this challenging uh, business are influenced by the syndrome of repatriation, the Ulysses syndrome, always calling for the eventual return to Ithaca. No matter how far uh, they had to travel in their quest to peacefully conquer the world's oceans, the Greeks had always in mind their loved ones back home, including, of, four, of course, the homeland. So we note in recent years that people all over the globe are expecting an ongoing basis the reach to contribute towards the growing needs of society. Um, Mr. Papadimitriou mentioned <laughs> in a more uh, extreme way some of those voices. Uh, furthermore, we have noticed almost all of the exceptionally successful entrepreneurs dedicated large parts of their estates in establishing foundations to satisfy those needs. In this context, we are most proud to know that our shipping community has included since the last part of 19th century, important benefactors who have generally, generously supported both the country and all those in need. It is this culture of giving back to society embedded in the DNA of the Greek shipping community, this long-standing tradition of national importance that has culminated in the formation of Synenosis, an organization committed in providing guidance, as well as being a tool to our future shipping generations in succeeding to keep its close ties with society. To this aim, we warmly, warmly invite all our colleagues to continue to support financially the mission of Synenosis, and in parallel to communicate this to the large community of the maritime cluster aiming at attractive more supporters. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and of course, I'm also available for any questions that you or the delegates may have. Yanni, thank you very much for your presentation. And, um, as, as you know, we're all aware of the of the, the activities, the amazing activities of this analysis. And uh, just a, a small quote just to mention about our Greekness, uh, quoted by well, the Sales Elitis that uh, when you uh, Greece, when you disintegrate Greece, you're going to find an olive tree. Uh, a great, great grapevine and ambeli, and a ship and a caravi, which basically means that in recreating it, that's all the three ingredients you really need. And I think that's great. I think it also blends with the romanticism which comes within the um, um, our activity and the fact that we're so capable of actually doing so much, which is not so much based on being particularly intelligent or it's more like a matter of enthusiasm and romanticism and of course, a faith in God. One I'd like to, if I may ask one question, which I think is quite important with your presentation, Yanni, is that how is the actual scene analysis run and how actually involved are the Greek ship owners in the decision-making process uh, and the collective efforts? Could you give us a, a short comment on that? Thank you. Sure, sure, thank you. Thank you. That's a good question. Um, 
it is important to, to, to state that a number of Greek ship owners are actively involved in the running of synthesis, either in the formation of the general strategy or the approval of uh, proposals that are coming from the management or even uh, going out and negotiating uh, what synthesis will buy and give because synthesis do doesn't give away money. It provides what is needed directly to the beneficiaries. So um, this valuable contribution in time and in personal effort underscores the commitment of those individuals and in turn of the Greek shipping community. The running of synthesis is lean and mean, in many ways mirroring exactly the efficiency of the ship owners' own shipping groups. And this is translated in the bottom line where the beneficiaries receive the full value of the donations. Okay, thank you. Tell me, um, since we've actually finished the, the, the we've actually finished the, the panelist presentations, um, does any one of you want to add something or, or how we can interrelate together? Because as I mentioned in the beginning, it's very important that uh, for our society that we are we make the effort and we all have to make a concerted effort to have the interrelation and synergy between the organization involved. That does not necessarily have to be involved with the, with the regard to a, a large, a more glamorous uh, uh, charity organization. But I think the emphasis has to be that we all can all individually, even in a small, mediocre way, we can all make a contribution on the basis that uh, we all feel, I think that's why we're here today, is that the biggest pleasure in life and the biggest satisfaction one gets in life is the ability to give. If one wants to give a definition of happiness in one single word, it's in giving. Because that, and that's one thing I think, which uh, irrespective of the background of the Greek shipping community, we've all had ups and downs, but I think to a certain extent, that's what actually unites us together. The fact that we are givers, dinome, and we give uh, wholeheartedly. And as I say in Greek, meraki, and uh, our, all that comes down to the fact that we, we're encouraging the next generation, we inspire them. And I think at the end of the day, the, the contribution which we all have towards health, education, and in addition to the job opportunities, which I think is also part of the, uh, the contribution which we're making, I think it's very, very important. But I'd like to have a few comments from anybody or from the, from the, on the panel and also from the floor. We've got a few minutes left. Thank you. May I? Pardon. Pardon. Um, yes, I've spoken many, many times about the contributions of shipping to the economy and the society, and we've highlighted, highlighted the four main ones. But there is the last one, which perhaps might be or might become the most important of all. And this is a notional contribution. And it is the contribution of shipping shown to the rest of the Greeks that there is nothing magical or, let's say, extraterrestrial in, in doing your job in a way as to become the best in the world, <clears throat> as Greek shipping is. There's nothing really uh, magical, as I said, other than, you know, very hard work, discipline, perseverance, and, you know, staying the course for as long as it takes to, to succeed. And I'm afraid that these are uh, attributes and, 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 and mentalities which are hard to find in, in the normal course of the business in, in our country. And if we can show that with these, with these uh, uh, attributes and this attitude, one can become the best in the world, I can't see why this cannot apply for the whole of Greece. So in short, um, a, a logo could be do it as as shipping does it and then Greece would would enter a different course so that's that's a very quick further contribution which I think would be very important if we if we ever manage to do that Anna, thank you um I just want to remind you now I'm with me have one last any punch line which one has to mention now because we're now I've got the bleeping light coming up saying that we're ending the session so uh, basically, if you if you have to say something short and sweet, I'd like to hear any, the last comment from any of you, any of the other other speakers. No, no neither. One short and sweet. It is very important, and that transpired from all with the paradigm. And then, as Eugenie used to say, the same: did someone to catch the fish. I think our most important obligation is to change the crisis into opportunity to prepare a new generation in order to be what they can be. And I like the synthem of Panos. That's in few words. 
No, no, thank you. Well, for my part, I mean, the panelists, like to, the panelists like to thank all of you as a moderator. Um, I think we've all made uh, some, at least we give the insight as how we work. And I think one of the underlining factor, which I think uh, is the last thing which comes across to people who are listening to us, is our childish enthusiasm. I think without that, we wouldn't go anywhere. Anyway, thank you very much. Nico, well, thanks thank for you. having us. And uh, now we'll finish this session. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful thank and so, much. so proud thank you. to have uh, such an amazing panel. I can't thank you enough. And, uh, uh, you know, looking at the attendance, uh, of this panel, I think it says it all. Uh, thank you very much uh, for a tremendous uh, insight and discussion. Thank you to all. Thank you, Nico. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank and to you, you as well <laughs> for the moderation. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you.